video is going to talk about problems 18, 19, and 20. So, problem number 18, it asks us to find the inverse of this right here. That's what we're looking for. So right now, we're going to do the steps for finding an inverse. We're going to write f of x equals 2 radical x plus 3. And the very first thing when dealing with terms of x and y, if you wanted to find your inverse, is change f of x to y. That's the first thing. Now, what do you guys remember finding an inverse? After you've changed f of x to y, what do you do now? Right. Good job. Switch x and Now, what are we going to do? We're going to solve for y. We're calling for lots of variables. So, 2 radical y plus a 3 equals x. So, so far, hopefully you guys see, all I did was just rearrange things so that the y is right here, over here on the left. I didn't move anything across the equal sign, I just kind of switch, them, switch places. This is the concept of if A equals B, then B equals A. Now, to solve for my Y variable, what am I going to do first? Minus 3. Minus 3, okay. It's going to take away 3 from that side. everything by 2. So we get radical y equals the quotient of a number minus 3 divided by 2. That's the quotient. So the difference between a number and 3 minus 2 and divided by 2. Now, what are we going to do? Now we're going to square this side and Pass that horizontal line test, everybody. Let's see if we can find the one that passes the horizontal line test. I already know the answer, but we're going to just type it in. I can just visualize. I can, I'm looking at all these graphs. I'm like, ooh, I know which one passes. So here, go to graphic calculator. Let's start with let's start with A. Clear that out. Clear this out. 
three absolute value. Hmm. I think that's alpha with no interest x minus one. Minus one. So go to the right here and get a minus four and hit graph. Let's take a look at it. Ooh, does that pass the horizontal line test? No, it doesn't. You're like, what's the horizontal line test? Well, if this right here crosses more than one place, that means it does not pass the horizontal line test. Now, some of you might be watching the video, dude, you need to be talking about the vertical line test. The vertical line test is to test whether something is a function. This tests whether it's a one-to-one -one function. Okay. Now, a one-to-one -one function, like right here, are these different x values? Those are different x values, but what? They're the same y value. So a one-to-one -one function does not allow you to have the same y value for different x values. That's what it's talking about. So right now, that one didn't pass. Let's go to y equals. Clear this sucker out. Let's type in uh, b. Here we go. Does this pass a horizontal line test? Yes, it does. No matter what, it passes the horizontal line test. So yes, this would actually be your answer. All right. But let's say you didn't choose that one to graph. Let's say you chose the next one, which is it's alpha y equals enter. And in the numerator, we're going to type in 2x minus 2 all divided by an x being squared. Let's take a look at this guy. Oh, that definitely doesn't what? Does not pass. Alright? Think of this as a graph that's not going to pass the test. Alright? I'm thinking of certain students that will probably be this graph. I'm not going to say any names. Probably most likely not here. Not going to watch a video. Alright, so Next one, go to y equals. And look at the last question. X cubed minus one x cubed. X cubed minus eight x. Huh. 
So if f of x equals the savings and x equals her paycheck, we actually need to solve for what? To solve for x. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use, use the inverse. Find the inverse. If we just find the inverse, that will solve for x. So here we go. So I said y equals 0.10x plus 30. Let's go ahead and exchange the x and the y. Okay? X equals 0 0.10y plus 30. All right, so there we go. We're basically finding the inverse, and now when we solve for y, we are going to be finding the one. We're going to be finding the paycheck. All right, so here we go. What's the two steps we got to do? What's the last thing we need to do? Everything by the way. Point. So your answer, y is equal to x minus 30 all over point 10. And you can say f of x, the function for her paycheck. Here, x represents the amount that she saved. Here, x represents the paycheck. All right? The answer in this particular case, the answer is J, because we're trying to figure out the amount of her wealth, given the amount she saves. So when you figure in, that's how much she saves. You can take away 30, divide it by 0 0.10, and that gets you back to where you are. So let's say, for example, let's say she saved 50 bucks. All right? She saved 50 bucks. Well, if you do 50 minus 30, that's what? That's 20. If you divide that by 0 0.10, which is basically dividing it by 1 tenth, and you multiply both things by 10, how much did she make? She made, she made 200. What's 10% of 200? 20. What's 20 plus 30? 50. So if she saved 50, and you plug that in, that gets you back to your So this is the final video. Um, if you start on this video, you need to watch the previous two.